Hello and welcome everyone to another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today I have a game, well it's game 3 of a best of 3 between StarTales Ace and MVP's Galaxy. Galaxy is the Zerg player, Ace obviously the Protoss player, and well, it is game 3 of a th best of 3, so clearly for anyone who is in the know knows that means they are one game apiece. If you don't want spoilers, pause this video now, go to my channel, check out the previous two games, otherwise you've been warned. So game 1 was very very convincingly aces with a beautiful little um, 2 immortal sentry push on daybreak, it just worked fantastically and really Galaxy couldn't hold it at all. Game 2 however, Galaxy went a bit more aggressive, he got muters, he got a lot of zerglings, it was mainly a zergling muter type build and just did so much harassment, he also did some lovely roach drops, it was just really really nice and kept ace pin back and galaxy just expanded everywhere, got an incredible income, denied aces income and expansions and eventually just went on to win with more stuff. So this is game 3 obviously, this is from the IPL 5 qualifiers in Korea, so blatantly they want to win and it all comes down to this, this is match point basically so well what do we know so far ace he's going to be fast expanding he's got pylon on the low ground that says everything you need to know galaxy he's favored this 13 pool build and yet again going for that 13 pool so this is a very very standard opening for him it delays the well it's slightly less economical but a lot lot safer so that's quite interesting but it's not really very typical in korean games to have early cheese or anything like that so possibly worthwhile getting a slightly later pool. It's it depends. Usually it's fourteen or fifteen. I think thirteen personally is a little bit early and not really necessary for even safety, but I suppose it means you get your queen out quicker, you get that inject slightly faster. This probe being very, very irritating and is ultimately gonna come down here and block off this expansion. So Ace again, he's going for this forge first, which is kind of a, necess a necessity because if the spawning pool is down that early, it may just be a little close from getting the cannon down if you went Nexus first. So a bit safer here just on Ace's part and I think I I genuinely like that. I think better to play it slightly safer um, and get into the mid and late game if you're confident in your macro abilities than just take an extra risk early on and try and just squeeze out an extra couple of probes earlier because ultimately if you just lose flat out at the start you're not going to be too happy in the third game of a best of three. This overall placement absolutely perfect, always stick them on the high ground. You will see here that the probe was basically shied away by four zerglings which every single game galaxy has gone for those four zerglings very very early on before this hatchery goes down so essentially completely normal. The probe is taking the zerglings the long way round just to allow this cannon additional time to definitely complete. We do just have droning coming out now from Galaxy. I expect him to take this third base super super quick. Generally um, about 4 minutes 20 he's hit every time and it looks again he's going to get it just before then actually about 4 minutes 17 so this is really really good play. Consistent play I think predominantly from Galaxy right now. He's getting the same timings every single match and that is just really quite beautiful. Actually, I think both these players have gone for nearly identical builds in every match, so it will just be interesting to see. I mean, early game builds, obviously, there's deviation later, but they're opening. We do have Chrono Boost going down on the Nexus, the Cybernetics Core on its way, so no rushed out Zealot or anything like that. The Zerglings have come back bar one, which is going to the Watchtower. Always as Zerg players take the Watchtowers, they are so, so effective, especially on um, maps like this where you can see the exit from their natural, because you then get pretty much the earliest possible warning of any push coming in. You, For example, you don't know that you haven't scouted in their base until this overlord comes in, but they could have had, say, two gateways in there and this third gateway, and they're just massing up zealots, in which case all you have to do to defend that is get some roaches out and you're laughing, but obviously if you don't scout it as soon as possible, your roaches may not come out in time. Anyway, the third base nearly finished up here for Galaxy. He is going to be slightly behind in the work account at the moment, just because his third base hasn't kicked in, and that will come out pretty soon. And actually, we'll see here Ace going for that Stargate. I don't know if it has been seen. Actually, it has, so we will see here that Overlord does have enough vision to see that Stargate come down, which is really a massive win there for Galaxy, because he's going to be in a position prepared to deal with it. The first entry does come out and he's going to go and try and snipe off that Overlord, but that Overlord should be able to very happily get away. Warp Gate Tech on the way, and this is a very similar opening to Game 2 from Ace, where he went for that Stargate. He got a lot of Phoenix out, so we'll wait and see if he does something similar. And Galaxy actually fractionally oversaturated, well, quite a bit oversaturated on the minerals here, so he's now going to go and take all of his gas, or at least the first two gas there. He is at what is, I believe, essentially perfect saturation 
at his main and is now just taking a third gas down at his third base. So this is all pretty standard. A Phoenix is going to be the choice of unit here. That Overlord was just coming over to actually see what would come out. And basically we do now have two Overlords which are going to go down essentially for free. That is obviously a big win. It will mean that they have to be replaced and also it's a hundred minerals and a lava essentially which early game lava are a very very precious resource because you don't have necessarily that many. Now you've up to three bases it's not as bad with the injects going off but still it's not a perfect ideal. Two Phoenix out, third one on the way. Last game, in game two Ace I believe went to about five Phoenix. It may have been four can't recall exactly but still be pretty good we do have that evolution chamber coming down ready for the spores but still just phoenix being pumped out which are going to overlord hunt they also are going to be pretty effective at lifting we do have four queens already on the field and the phoenix do need to be careful but with some good lifts you can actually pick off queens quite comfortably with phoenix especially on stuff to about four to five and at that point it would become a little bit difficult with zerg player because they lose injects which ultimately really damage their production and allow the protoss player to get ahead if not you can just pick off some drones and drones are perfectly happy because every drone is 50 minerals and a lava and just delays their economy a little bit but as you see here this queen is going to go down fairly comfortably and the spore does come up but a queen and a couple of drones is nothing to shy away from that's quite a big loss again no resources resources lost to 550 you can't engage much more cost effectively than that meanwhile we've got the walk gate tech finished we've got robotic play coming out so again ace going to that colossi tech very very quickly that's very much a similar build to what he did game two he obviously felt was very very effective he is getting some good scouting information but there are spores down everywhere now and that's going to cause a bit of a problem the spores are in the mineral lines um, except here where there's actually two just to cover absolutely everything and these phoenix are getting shut down pretty hard a macro hatch on the way down here for galaxy he's also ace is getting out some warp ins he's got to try and put on some pressure and he may even try and secure his third relatively quickly that colossi is on its way out, the Colossus rather on its way out, the Spire coming down as well now for Galaxy, that'll allow him to go for that Muta build if he wants to again, or ultimately for the Corruptors to deal with the Colossus. Now we do have more gateways coming down now, take him up to a grand total of 6 gates, and if he does take this third Nexus as he is now, and he gets that up and secured, well 6 gates off of 3 Nexus is absolutely sustainable, it's really really quite easy. The Hydrogen coming out now and Hydras are an unusual choice, you don't see them that often, the only real time you'll see Hydras in ZBP is if they're going heavy air or heavy gateway units because once Colossi come out, Hydras get wrecked so badly, they're glass cannons, they get killed very very quickly another Spore on the way out, so clearly Galaxy a little bit worried those um, Zealots are going to take down this fourth base very very quickly may force a cancel but we've got 16 Zerglings on the way the Zerglings are up here forced to cancel at Ace's third so I guess that came up even, I don't know if the cancel did go off there but the Colossus is now out and that is going to allow Ace to really be quite effective because I don't actually believe there's a Roach one even down yet for Galaxy we do have a lot of well, Zerglings out, the Zealot gets taken down very, very quickly. The Hydrogen's down. The Mutalisks are going to be the unit of choice here for Galaxy. And at the moment, the Stalker count is at zero. Literally, the only things are those Phoenix and the Sentry. But 14 Mutas are going to be very, very effective against those Phoenix. Because while they can be kite, you can kite with Phoenix against Muta. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. And especially when the Muta numbers are so high, it can be pretty effective. But one Muta is going to go down very, very quickly here. And the rest of the Mutas are going to try and come in. And they're actually going to shut this down really hard. And all the Phoenix go down. There's a big loss there for Ace. And loses his map control. And also his way of dealing with so many Mutalisks. But of course the one thing that Galaxy has to be a little concerned of is if Ace just decides, well, you've got muters, they're bad in head-on engagements, I've got Colossi out, I've got Immortals out, I'm just going to come and kill you. Which of course is the big threat, he can also drop down some Photon Cannons in his mineral lines just like that, and with the Stalkers as well that's going to be quite easy to defend. Photon cannons coming down at the third as well. So these muters are not going to be able to be as effective as they were in the first game. But look at these streams of zerglings. The now big threat for Galaxy are these colossi. If he can pick those off effectively, then he's going to be absolutely laughing. And one colossi is going to go down very, very quickly. That is a big, big win there for Galaxy. Ace needs to defend this just perfectly. 
the Muters are picking off cannons as best they can. They are into the main base now, and this is going to force all the probes to pull out. Quite a few probes get taken down, and if that Twilight Counter goes down while it's researching Blink, there's going to be a big, big loss. Blink Stalkers are one of the most effective ways for Protoss to deal with Mutalisks, and it is going to go down before Blink finishes, and that is absolutely huge. A lovely win there for Galaxy, and it's delaying Blink massively there. Proton Cannons will be in range, so another Muter will go down, but other than that, everything's looking pretty much okay. We've got a Zergling counter attack, but this is really as defended as that Colossi can be. It's walled in by those Zealots and the Cannons and the buildings, so right, rightly so, Galaxy is not going in to deal with that. He's mainly on Zergling Muter now. He does have plus one on those Mutalisks and also plus one on the Zerglings, so favouring that attack upgrade. The plus one air upgrade for Muters actually means that they will do well, an additional damage on every bounce attack, rather than one damage, it does two. Um, that's just a lot more effective. It doesn't actually scale. If you get the plus two air upgrades, you don't get three damage on bounce. So really that plus one is the most significant to users. And now we do have Zerglings coming into the main base, streaming into the natural, and well, the plus I can try and clean it up, but as long as Galaxy spreads out these Zerglings, Ace is going to have big problems. If you look at the supply difference, it's absolutely huge right now. Behind this, the fourth and fifth base have been taken down by Galaxy and these mutants just being ever so effective, the Stalkers are not able to deal with them cost effectively at the moment but rightly so we will see Galaxy pull out and just go for a little retreat to restock and well this 4th and 5th base being down are absolutely massive, it's now 5 base Zerg against the 3 base Protoss, the work down 90 to 55, so 90 is too high basically but it does mean that Galaxy can just keep pumping units and just keep engaging, losing, and he's got enough money to just restock near instantly. He's got his 8th gas up, he's also taking, he's going to go up to 10 gas to just support this mass mute style. The Baning's coming out as well. No drop tech yet or anything like that, so we're not going to see Bane rain. The Mute is yet again coming into the natural and is picking up so much stuff that Colossi, Colossus is in a bit of a bad position and goes down, there's a massive loss there. And now that there is no Colossus on the field, suddenly Ace is in a lot of problems because these Zerglings are going to be able to deal so much damage because there's no splash to really deal with them effectively. And well, everything's streaming in, probes getting taken out left, right and centre, Ace is going to have to do something good, but he instead just GG's out and that means that this best of three goes to Galaxy. So I hope you did enjoy this series, if you did, please give the video a thumbs up leave any comments below or anything like that it would be awesome and most importantly subscribe because i mean cool games like this i put up every single day usually multiple games um or series so do check it out and a subscri subscribing would be pretty damn win wouldn't want you to miss anything awesome so thank you very much for watching i hope you did enjoy and hope to catch you again soon bye for now